Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about Arcanum's DAT files, D-A-T. Yesterday's video was all about all the data that Arcanum had. I was talking about how much we had a lot of data and we had to store it. And if you've ever tried to mess around in the Arcanum folders, you'll notice that the data, most of the data is kept in big monolithic files whose extension is D-A-T for data. I want to talk about uh, real quickly how we did that and then why we did that um, because it makes sense if you're just curious about making a game or if you're curious about modding a game or patching a game because there's a whole bunch of reasons we do these. Quickly the how. What we do is we, at some point when we had all the files for the game, we would write them sequentially into a file. So all the data in the game is in one big file. As we write them, we keep a list of the file name and where it started, where the beginning of that file is in that big file, the offset from the beginning. That table gets stored when we're done writing out that whole data file. We store it at the end and we go back and we write right at the beginning what the offset is for that table. So then, when the game goes to open a DAT file, it opens the DAT file, reads that first offset, jumps deep in the file, and reads out that list of files and their offsets. Then, whenever something in the game wants to open one of those files, the game finds it on this list, and then just in that one file that we have open, seeks to that location, and then reads in the file. Boom. Big question is, why do we do this? Why not just make directories and throw the files in there and just when you want to open a file just call your operating systems file open and get the file seems like that would be a lot easier and we did do that in development but there's a bunch of reasons why you don't want to do that on a shipping product and i'll go through them here the first one is you only for all those files thousands, tens of thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands, you only have to keep one file pointer open. It turns out that it is a lot faster to seek from the beginning of an already opened file to an offset within it. It's a lot faster to do that than to call open on the file. So you save a lot of time. But in one of those rare trade-offs where you save both time and uh, memory, it also uses a lot less memory because whenever you open a file, your operating system creates in memory a lot of data associated with that open file. And so if you have 50 open files, you're keeping 50 of those open file memory structures around. Well, we only had one open file instead of 50. So a lot less memory being used. Another reason we do this is hard drives use something called sector sizes, which is the minimum size of a stored, of a sector. So typical, typically these are like 512 bytes. What this means is if you store a file that's 100 bytes, you're going to use 512 bytes on the hard drive. You're not, well, you're not gonna really use it. You're gonna use 100, but the remaining 412 bytes are part of the sector that that first 100 bytes are in, and they can't be reused. Um, it has to do with how the hard drive keeps file tables and the, end, the, the, number, the size of those file tables. The bigger your sector size, the smaller those file entry tables, but the more wastage you have per file. Currently, a hard drive ranges anywhere from a sector size of about 512 bytes up to 4K bytes. And they can even be outside of that, but that, that's the general range. So let's think about that for a second. Let's say you had a thousand 100 byte files, and this is not unreasonable. You may have, you know, for every perk and skill and attribute in the game, you may have a little file that describes how it works, you know, in a, in a smaller data file so that the designers can go in and mess with the parameters on that thing. So let's say you have a thousand of them, a thousand 100 byte files. You would think that would use 100,000 K on the hard drive. 
No. With the ranges I told you about sector sizes, those files are going to use anything anywhere from 512K to 4 meg, which is a lot bigger than 100K. So if you stored all those 1,100 byte files in one file, then it would be 100K. So you're going to save a lot of hard drive space if you do this technique. And that right then, back back in the 90s, you had people had hard drives that were, you know, 128 meg, 256 meg. They weren't very big. So you had to try to make your game have as small a footprint as possible. Another reason we did it, if we ever we needed to update a file, let's say that you wanted to patch your game. The way we would do that is we stored all of our files in these DATs. The DATs themselves were numbered. So for Arcanum, it was called Arcanum 1 DAT, Arcanum 2 DAT, Arcanum 3 DAT. And when we would go to open these DAT files, when the game would start up, it would say, just find all the DAT files and open them in numerical order. The reason we did that is if any subsequent DAT file contained the same file as a previous one, that new file overrode the old one. In Remember, we, we would read in a list of all the files and where their offsets were. What this meant was if you found a file XXX in Arcanum1.dat, and then later on you find the same file XXX in Arcanum4.dat, it's the Arcanum4.dat that you remember. You throw away the information for Arcanum 1.dat. Actually, you overwrite it. So you basically say, oh, you want to open file XXX? That's in Arcanum 4, this, many, this, big, this much of an offset. We do that so when we make patches, if you patch your game, you usually send out a new executable and some new data. We'd send out a new executable, we just overwrite the previous executable. But then you'd send out the patch as the next numbered executable. So if we shipped Arcanum with Arcanum 1 through 4 dat, if we did a patch, it would be Arcanum 5 dot dat. And any file in there, if it had the same name as the previous one, would overwrite it. So we could patch if we had bad data, or we wanted to do some balancing, or we wanted to change how some items worked. We could just change that data, and then put that in a higher numbered dat, and it would overwrite the earlier one. That was great. It made, made patches much easier. And again, smaller. It also helped with modding. We wanted people to be able to mod our games easily. So modders, we shipped with those tools. You had a tool called DB Maker that was part of Arcanum, and the game would ship with it. Modders could take all the files that were going into their mods and place them in their DAT. Mod files, mod DAT files got loaded after the base game. So that meant all the data in the modders' data files overrode base game. So if you wanted to change the way an item worked, you just wrote out a new version of that item. If you wanted to change the way a creature worked, you just wrote out a new uh, file for that creature. You could change art, you could change sounds, you could override anything you wanted and you wouldn't have to go find its entry in some table somewhere. All you had to know was, I don't want a gun to sound like, you know, gun shoot dot wave. You make your own gun shoot dot wave and now yours takes precedence over the games. So that right there made some modding things much easier. Another reason we did this is because of compression. Again, um, we were trying to save space for people because space was a premium, especially in the 90s and the early 2000s. So some of the, you have three different ways you could do compression with this technique. One, you could, do no, you could do nothing. Just don't bother compressing any of the files. You're already saving space, like I said, by putting them into one big file because you're not losing all that sector wastage. So let's take that as the baseline and then talk about a couple other things you can do and how it compares to this as a baseline. You could compress the DAT files when you distribute them. You know, run it through like PKZip or RAR or something or make your own compression. But then when you decompress it, you just put the DAT file as is on the hard drive. This means that downloading your game or copying it from the installed disks would go a lot faster but it would take up the same amount of space on the hard drive as if you didn't do compression within the DAT file. But if you compress the DAT file both in distribution and on the hard drive, this not only makes the download or copy 
faster, but it gives you a much smaller hard drive footprint than even you'd get with the baseline. However, it's slower to load a file now because when you seek to the beginning of the file, you now have to run it through a decompressor in, to get it into memory, which is just a little slower than if you could just read the data out raw. So depending on how big our DAT files were and where the state of the average hard drive was, you saw one of these three things being used for DAT files. Now these days, a lot of the reasons I just mentioned don't matter as much. You know, computers are faster, hard drives are bigger, we have more memory on the computer, so people don't care as much. However, some of the things I've mentioned still matter. Um, people still want to be able to distribute games easily. They want people to be able to mod them easily. So putting all of your files into one monolithic DAT file actually helps with that. So I hope this kind of explains and maybe takes yesterday's video about Arcanum data and gives you some context for how all that data was <clears throat> used and distributed by the game.